Today, the city, which is even listed in the English dictionary as Kumbakonam, was known as Kudantai and Kudamuku at the time of our story. Apart from the glory of the holy place, it was also famous for the child seer. A short distance from Kudanta to the southwest, the medieval capital of the Cholas, Palaere, presented a majestic site with sky-high palace roofs and temple towers. Kudantai Sodhidar had collected the horoscopes of all the royals who lived in the Palaere palaces. Flipping through the horoscopes he had collected, he found the horoscope of Kajumbalar Princess Vanathi. After staring at the horoscope for some time, the soothsayer looked up at Vanati's face. He looked at the horoscope again. He kept looking at each other like this, but could not find a way to open his mouth and say anything. What, Josiah? Are you going to say something, aren't you? Kundeva Devi asked. Mother. What can I say? How can I say it? I saw this horoscope by accident once before. I couldn't believe it. I doubted whether it could be like this. Now when I look at this woman's face and this horoscope together, I am amazed. Stun. Stun. Stun enough and then say something special. This is a very lucky horoscope, mother. I tell you that you will not think anything different. It is even better than yours. I have never seen such a lucky horoscope. Kundave smiled and understood, Vanadio was ashamed. Sister. You go and call this unfortunate person the luckiest person in the world. That's all he says. She said. Mother. What did you say? If I am wrong, I will leave my business, said the astrologer. No, astrologer. No, don't do such a thing. You'll be saying a good word to some four. But you're just saying it in general, and you're not saying anything in particular. That's why she's suspicious. Want to be specific? Here I am. Four months ago something happened that seemed ominous. Something went wrong, but it wasn't really ominous. All the good luck is going to come to these gomas from that. Vanati. What did I say? Did you see? Kundave Devi said. Looks like you already told him. Vanatha said. Part here a soothsayer this woman's speech. Let's talk, mother. Let's talk about anything now. Tomorrow the king will marry the king. Say so. If you talk to young women about marriage, won't they be happy to listen? That's what I'm saying too, mother. Shouldn't you talk about marriage in a hurry? If you do, they'll say, this old man's out of his mind. Where will Purusha come to her? When will he come? What will be his sign? Can you tell all this from the horoscope, astrologer? Aha! What can't you say? You can say it well. After saying that, the astrologer looked at the horoscope again. We do not know whether he noticed, or whether he pretended to notice. Then, raising his head, he said, Lady! This princess does not need a husband from far away. He is a recent one yet that valiant warrior is no longer in this country. He has crossed the sea. Said the astrologer. On hearing this Kundave looked at Vanathi. Vanati couldn't control the anger that rose in her heart, and her face showed. Then? Who is he? What clan? Is there any sign to know? The blessed man who marries this well-fed woman will have a conch wheel on his hands, mother. Kundave looked at Vanathi again. Vanati's face was bent and was looking at the earth. So, will her hands also be missing any markings? Said Kundawai Prati. Mother. Have you ever seen her feet? Why, astrologer. What is this word? Are you telling me to hold her leg? No, I didn't say that, but once upon a time, thousands of royal women, princesses, princesses, queens, empresses, would do penance for the privilege of touching the feet of this lady. Sister. This old man is making fun of me. Is this why you brought me here? Get up and go. Vanatha said with a truly furious look. What are you freaking out about, girl? 
let him say something. I'm not saying anything, I'm just telling you what's mentioned in this horoscope. Batatamurai is something poets describe as courtesy. Ask me to show you a little of this woman's soul. There must be a pattern of centamurai petals on it. Enough. If you say anything more about her, astrologer, she will take me by the hand and drag me away. Tell me a little about the husband she is going to get. Ah. I tell you. The blessed one who takes her by the hand will be a valiant warrior. He will stand at the forefront of a hundred battlefields and light the garland. Manity will be king, he will sit forever on the throne of the emperor who is admired by thousands of kings. I don't believe what you say. How could that happen? Kuntave Devi's face showed a mixture of curiosity, happiness, doubt and worry when she heard that. I don't believe it either. He's talking about something. He says it will make them happy. Vanatha said. It's no harm if you don't believe today, once you will believe then don't forget this poor soothsayer. Sister. Shall we go? Vanathi asked again. Two teardrops peeked out from the corners of her dark eyes. I will tell you only one more thing. Hear it and depart, for the warrior who is about to marry this princess will face many perils and dangers, there will be many enemies. Oh! But all the dangers and continents will fly away in the end, the enemies will perish. The hero who attains this goddess will defy all obstacles and attain the throne. There is a more important message than this, mother. I am old and so I will leave it unsaid. One day you look at this woman's belly. In it if it were not for the lines of a lilette, I would have given up this profession of astrology. What's so special about the moon's line, astrologer? Don't you know who is the Lord who is sitting on the top of the tree? A child will be born in her womb with the aspect of Lord Vishnu. Even her hero has many hurdles, obstacles, dangers and continents. But the son who is going to incarnate in this woman's womb will have no obstacles. Everything he thinks will come true, everything he takes will be fulfilled. Everything he touches will turn to gold, wherever he sets his foot will come under his rule, wherever his eye sees the tiger flag will fly. Mother. The armies led by her son will flow everywhere like the fresh flood of the Golden River. Jayalakshmi will stand and serve him with folded hands. The fame of his country will spread in the three worlds. He was born. The fame of the clan will stand as long as the world. While the astrologer spoke like a madman, Kundave Devi looked at his face and listened as if she were devouring his words. Sister. She looked back in shock after hearing a soft voice. Something does to me. Vanati said more gently. She fainted suddenly and fell on the ground. Josiah. Bring some water quickly. After saying that, she lifted Vanati and placed her on her lap. The astrologer brought water, Kundave took water and splashed it on Vanatha's face. Nothing will happen, mother. Don't worry. Said the astrologer. Don't worry, she's used to it. It's been like this five or six times already. She'll wake up after a while and ask if it's Balaka or Kailasa said Kundave. Then in a slightly soft voice, Josiah. I came to you mainly to ask one thing. Have people been talking about something in the country and cities for some time? A comet has been appearing in the sky for a few days? Is there really any meaning to all this? Is there any danger to the kingdom? Will there be any transition confusion? Asked Ilay Aprati. Don't just ask me that, mother. Nations, kingdoms and royal programs have no horoscopes, no fortune-telling. All that doesn't come in the tricks I've learned. Wise men, rishis, sages and yogis may look at the wisdom and say. This poor man doesn't have that power. In royal affairs, the day, nakshatra, horoscope, astrology all become powerless. Josiah. You speak very cleverly. Do not look at horoscopes for the kingdom. But can't you look at my father and brothers? If you look at their horoscopes it will be like looking at the royal horoscopes. I'll wait another day, mother. Usually, it's a time of confusion and danger. 
everyone needs to be a little more careful. Josiah. My father, the emperor, has been troubled ever since he left Palayare for Tanjavur. I told you earlier, mother. Maharaja has a great continent. His family also has great dangers. All will be resolved by the grace and glory of Goddess Durga. Sister. Where are we? Vanati's soft voice asked. Vanati, who was lying with her head on Kundave's lap, spread her eyes like the wings of a beetle and woke up. Kanmani. We are still in this world. The Pushpaka Vimana has not yet arrived to take us to the heavenly world. Get up. Let's get on our horse-locked chariot and go to the palace. Said Kundave. Vanati sat up and asked, Have I fainted? She said. You didn't faint, you fell asleep while lying on your sister's lap. Didn't you hear that I even sang a lullaby? Don't be angry, sister. I've been scratching my head without knowing it. Screeching, screeching, if this soothsayer had prophesied to me like that, I would have screeched too. Not so, sister. Do I believe all he says? Believe it or not. But Josie are scared away. A coward like you shouldn't be taken anywhere anymore. I was the one who told you that I didn't come to the soothsayer. Is it you? My son, get up, let's go. Can you walk four steps to the door? If not, do you want to carry it on your hip? Don't. Don't. You can walk just fine. Wait a moment, mother. I will give you the offering of the goddess, take it and go said Josiah, and began to build the thatch. Josiah. You told me everything, you told my sister nothing. Vanatha said. Mother. I have told everything to Ilay Abradi, what do I have to say? The hero who will marry his sister. Asagaya Surer, Kundave interrupted. What's the doubt? The great valiant Rajakumar. He who has all the thirty-two Samudrika locks Hanas, Pragaspati in intellect, Saraswati in cunning, Cupid in beauty, Arjuna in energy. From where and when will Rajakumar come, that Sukumar who is suitable for the youth? He's coming, mother. He's coming. He's going to come, and he's going to come very soon. How will he come? Will he come on a horse? Will he come on a chariot? Will he come on an elephant? Will he come on foot? Or will he jump from the sky with a roof? Kuntavai Devi asked mockingly. Sister. I hear the horse's footsteps. Vanati said with some excitement. What no one hears, only you will hear miraculously. No, I'm not joking, listen. Indeed, the sound of a horse galloping down the street was heard. What if you ask me? Will the horse not go on the streets of Kudantai town? Said Kundave. No, it looked like it was coming here. Get up and let's go if you feel something strange. At this moment a disturbing sound was heard at the door of the house, voices were also heard. Is this Josiah's house? Yes, who are you? Is Josiah there? Shouldn't you go in? That's how I'll go. I won't let go. Want to see Josiah? Come on then. Can't come then, I'm in too much of a hurry. Hey. Hey. Stop. Stop. Hold on. Go away. I'll kill you if you stop me. Sir. Sir. Don't. Don't go in. Such confused clamor was heard nearer and nearer, the door opened with a knock. A young man came rushing in with such a magnificent gait. Someone was trying to grab him by the shoulders from behind. The boy strode through the doorway and entered. Readers will have guessed who is the boy who came, it is our hero Van Dye the Van. The eyes of the three people inside the house saw the hero at the same time. Van Diadeva also looked at the people inside. No, he saw only one of the people inside. Not even that. He did not see Kundave Devi completely. He saw only her golden face. Even if the whole face is seen, it is not. 
he looked at the petals of her coral mars slightly spread with wonder, he looked into her white eyes filled with majesty, surprise and mischievous laughter. He saw the eyelashes and the dark brows, he looked at the saffron red sunken cheeks. He looked at the smooth neck like a conch. He saw all this alone at the same time. Separately they were imprinted in his mind. All this lasted for a few seconds, then he suddenly turned to the soothsayer's disciple and said, Why, you shouldn't have told me that there are girls inside? If I had told you, would I have come like this? Asking that, he pushed the disciple to the other side and crossed the threshold again. However, before going out, he looked back at Kunde Vedavi once more and left. Hey dad! Doesn't it look like the storm is over? Said Kunda Y. Prati. There is no rest yet, listen. Said the princess of Kajumbalur. Vandiyadeva and the soothsayer's disciple were still arguing at the door. Josiah. Who is this? Said Kundave. I don't know, mother. It looks like someone's crazy. He looks like a big rascal. Kuntava suddenly thought of something and smiled cheerfully. Why are you smiling sister? Why? We were talking about whether my future husband was going to come on a horse, an elephant, or jump through the roof, and I laughed thinking about it. Now Vanati too couldn't hold back the laughter. Both of them laughed together in waves. Even the sound of quarrel outside was drowned in the sound of laughter of these two manga yars. The soothsayer, deep in silent thought, gave Kungamam to both the royal princesses. Both got up and got up, they went outside the house. The soothsayer also came. Vandiyathevan, who was standing a little aside at the door, saw the women and said, I apologize. This wise man did not say that there were women inside. That is why I came in such a hurry. I apologize for that. He said in a loud voice. Kuntheve looked up at Vandiyathevan once with her face full of flowers and mischievous and mocking sparkling eyes. Not a word of reply. She grabbed Vanatha by one hand and pulled her towards the banyan tree where the chariot stood. It seems that the women of Kutanthai town have no respect. Shouldn't you at least look back and say a word just because a man comes and talks? Vandiyathevan hurriedly said that fell on their ears. The driver had locked the horse in the chariot and stood ready. Both the princesses got into the chariot and the charioteer got in front. The chariot sped towards Arisa Langarai. Vandiyathevan stood watching till the chariot disappeared.